Welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I'm going to show you how to create the Net Thatch Pyography artwork. There are terms I will be using like zigzag and pull away strokes. If you are unfamiliar with my terminology, I put a link to a tutorial that describes them in the description below. So let's get to work. The bars on the suet cage need to be dark in color. You can burn them in one at a time as I'm currently doing, or burn one side of all of the bars, rotate the wood, and then burn the other side of all of the bars. The goal is to create bars that have crisp, clean edges. To keep the bars from looking flat, Shade the vertical bars so the right side is slightly darker than the left. With the horizontal bars, shade those so the bottom or lower edge is darker than the top or upper edge of the bar. One very important thing is to make sure to keep your pen tip in optimal position as you work so the edges are crisp and clean. It might be helpful to draw an X on each bar with a pencil so it's easy to see which ones are bars and what's the background. Begin by using the razor edge of the shader to burn around the eye. Switch to a writer pen tip and fill in the eye so that it is dark brown to black in color, but avoid the little white reflection spot on the eye. Use a shader to burn a dark line along the top of the head. Then burn along the top edge of the white streak that runs above the eye. Next, burn along the lower edge of the white streak. Now burn in the black streak found just below the white one. I use zigzags to fill in the streak with color. When you get to the right edge or the end of the streak, extend the color down the side of the neck. Make sure to keep the edges of the streak jagged. Rotate the wood if needed to burn along the bottom edge of the black streak. Burn a dark thin line above the eye ring. Then burn along the lower edge of the black streak in front of the eye. Next, finish the black area on top of the head near the neck. Use the shader to burn along the upper edge of the top beak. Then extend the color to the halfway mark on the upper beak. Burn in the tip of the upper beak to a dark brown color. Burn in the rest of the upper beak to a medium tan color. Next, burn a dark line between the upper and lower beaks. Shade the lower beak to a medium tan color. Use the shader to burn in the couple of dark lines below and to the front of the eye ring. Burn short pull away strokes along the eye ring. Start the stroke on the outer edge of the ring and pull it towards the eye, but stop just before reaching the eye. This will leave a thin pale line next to the eye. Slightly darken the feathers to the right of the eye. The next area we'll burn in is the throat. Turn the heat on your unit to low and use zigzag strokes to burn in the feathers on the throat. As you burn in the feathers, consult the reference photo often. We are burning the pale shadows under the slightly ruffled feathers, so keep the heat set to low on your burner. The goal is to keep the burn strokes in the light to medium tan color range. Next, burn some tan lines along the white streak above the eye to break up the white block of color and give it a more realistic look. 
Use the razor edge of the shader to burn in some lines along the lower right edge of the throat just above the mantle. Use a right or pen tip to define the small white dot below the eye. Then draw some squiggly lines over the feathers to the right of the eye. Lightly burn over the eye ring to reduce the contrast. Use a right or pen tip to burn a few dark tan short lines in the deep shadows on the throat. Fill in the mantle to a dark tan color using zigzag strokes. The top edge of the mantle needs to be one to two shades darker than the middle. The lower portion of the mantle also needs to be one to two shades darker than the middle of it. Use zigzag strokes to burn the chest to a medium tan color. I decided my mantle wasn't dark enough, so I'm reburning over it. I'm using zigzag strokes for the reburning. Burn along the edges of the covert feathers so they are a dark tan color. The feathers have rough or jagged edges to them, so use short lines or dashes along the edge. Burn in the covert feathers. The lowest feather is a dark brown color, and the rest of them are dark tan. Burn each feather individually and keep the color slightly darker along the top edge of each feather. Let the color get gradually lighter along the lower edge of the feather. Start on the next row of wing feathers, which are the flight feathers. Burn a dark tan line between each feather and then fill in the feather with gradient color. As with the covert feathers, the lower edge of each flight feather should be several shades lighter than the top edge. I am using uniform strokes along the length of the feathers. I repeatedly burn over the feathers to build up the color. Continue to burn in each wing feather individually. Toward the bottom of the wing, you can't see very much of each feather. Look closely at the reference photo and notice how the feathers get darker and they have a white edge along them. Use a shader or a writer pen tip to burn in each feather while avoiding the white edge. Work slow along this area to minimize mistakes. Use zigzag strokes to burn in the patch of jagged feathers and long hairs along the left edge of the lower wing. Burn very short pull-away strokes between the coverts and the jagged feathers. Then re-burn the jagged feathers till they are dark tan in color. Burn in the last of the feathers on the lower wing. Start by burning in the thin dark shadow under the wing. Then use the razor edge of the shader to begin burning in the dark areas on each feather. The feathers in this section are very dark and they have pale edges around them. I am reburning the dark lines on the lower wing to better define each feather there. Rotate the board and work on the upper wing. Again, burn in each feather individually. The first few feathers have gradient color and should be burned to a medium tan. The lower feathers get darker and have the thin white edges on them. Now burn in the tail feathers. The top feathers are fairly uniform in color, but have jagged edges on them. The lower feathers are much darker and have the white edges around them.
burn in the dark shadows under the wing by the tail or rump of the bird. Finish burning in the feathers on the rump and belly. Looking at the reference photo, notice how the belly has an orange tinge of color to it. Plus, some of the feathers look more like hairs and are pretty long. In this area, I use zigzag strokes to create the feather texture. Plus, I burn numerous single lines of various lengths for the long hairs. The overall color on the belly should match the same color that you did on the chest area. Begin by burning along the back or right side of the leg. Extend the color down to the foot. Then burn the upper toe to a dark tan color. Work your way down the foot, burning the top to a tan color and the bottom a dark tan. Avoid the nodules on the toes for now. Burn in the lower claws to a dark tan color and burn that same color along the top edge of the upper claw. The rest of it is a tan color. Burn around the nodules to define them and then very lightly burn over them. Reburn along the leg and foot to build up the color and the shadows. As you work, consult the reference photo often. The upper leg is darker near the bird's belly and it gets lighter near the foot. Now we'll burn in the entire background to a tan color. This is needed to help the pale areas on the bird stand out. Just make sure you do not burn over the suet cake. Use uniform strokes and the shader of your choice for this step. For the suet cake, just burn in random blotches and tiny irregular patches of tan color. The goal is to give the cake a little texture and a touch of color. Lastly, burn a dark frame around the edge of the wood. You do not need to do the diagonal lines in the corners like I did. Once the frame is burned in, you didn't even notice them. Make sure to keep the pen tip in optimal position when burning along the inner edge of the frame so the lines remain crisp and clean. I hope you found the tutorial informative and easy to follow. If you try it, let me know as I'd love to see your work. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, there is a written tutorial, a free pattern, and the reference photo for this artwork. I put a link to the article in the description below. Well, thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next week.